Win-win. Hmm. Hello, guys, and welcome to the 11th episode of the MSC Performance Podcast. My name's Luke, and today I'm joined with Sonia. Hello. Hello. And today is going to be a review of the year of 2021, the ups, the downs, the trends that have come out of it, uh, and what we expect to, to be coming out of 2022 with uh, you know the Commonwealth Games coming up, uh, different trends that we'll see coming into uh, into strength and conditioning, and talking about how the pendulum will shift from, from one extreme to the other. So that's going to be the podcast today. So hopefully uh, a little bit of an insight into the year ahead and also a nice review of 2021, which has been a, a good year. Yeah, um, I think this is going to be a good one. And I think as we approach in like it's 1st of December today when we recording this um, end of the year, um, things are going to start slowing down towards the end of the month. So I think it's nice time to kind of reflect and evaluate what, what went good, what, what we've learned and how we're going to approach next year. This is just not just for us, but for everyone. 20, uh, December is the quietest month, so it's a good chance to, to look at what we've done right, what we've done wrong, and what we can change uh, coming into it. It's nice to reflect. It's nice to enjoy the positives from a year, which you know obviously started off negatively. It was a, a tough start to the year for everyone, uh, businesses, individuals. It was uh, you know, tough with COVID. I'd like to say we're out of the woods, but obviously we not? We, we, yeah. no one knows what's going to happen, so this could all be... Uh, uh, a mute point but uh, I guess we'll find out but yeah obviously Covid happened and we didn't get to open until March so in terms of the year review I think it starts with us not being at MSC uh, with the home workouts if you remember the joy of those very very much um, I think I stayed away from bodyweight exercises and I think I'm gonna <laughs> no I mean like obviously we've changed the we've kind of changed the approach in our medcons afterwards as our members have been doing online workouts um, and keeping with their fitness as much as they could. But I think if you guys yourself like did as many body weights workouts or, you know, as many like what, what you could do outside the gym, I think everyone got to a point when it was just getting a bit too much. There's um, only so many burpees, exactly. press ups that you could do. And, we, we, you know, we did our best to try and give the variation. Yeah. But what it did mean is that when we came back to obviously opening in March, um, obviously it meant no one had any bodyweight exercises, which they would have been thrilled about. Um, but it also meant that the uh, the new kit that we got, I think, was really mm. appreciated. And, and having the extra variation and having, I think I never did a bodyweight exercise. I jump a plyo for about two months. Yeah, um, yeah, but pretty much, yeah. It's all we've done for, for it's months. It's all we've done. Um, um, so yeah, the, as you said, like the addition of the ski erics, uh, that's been fantastic for the MSC, like a completely different stimulus to what we've been used to for years, Yeah. Uh, which obviously we've always worked um, very well with what we had, um, but the new little addition was just like a nice little t- the trick. I think then again, we got into lockdown when we just shortly purchased those. So people actually didn't have a chance to use them, similarly like the heaters. We opened and then closed again. Yeah, I feel, I feel we like, yeah. Yeah, we did. I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, oh, that, yeah, we gave the equipment out. We got it back. Exactly. We did it again. It was, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been Tough. like kind of in and out. But like lately, as things kind of settled, um, I feel pretty good like about everything what what happened. Like, I think it was a good lesson. Um, and I think good appreciation from everyone um, in terms of like fitness and health. I um, think we was never going to win any awards for being the, the most enjoyable sessions, but actually giving people um, a little bit of structure and a little bit of time away from you know, just staying on the to, laptop exactly. all day. People a chance just to do a workout, have some face to face interaction with other people when it was very limited. I think was really appreciated. And I think looking back, uh, maybe not enjoyable now, but like in a couple of years, you might think, yeah, fair play. Like it exactly. Was, uh, yeah. And as I said, like, I think like it kind of maybe opened um, eyes to people in terms of like how much actually exercise affect them and how much they need it, especially when um, like people have like office job um, based around computer, like it really, really set you, set you well. Cause like, it's obviously a bit different for us working in the gym. Sure. Um, I just, I just, that's something I, I've noticed that when people didn't have that access and had to work from home and do everything from home, even the exercise, it was a big struggle. Yeah. So I think the appreciation of gyms themselves is, is a big one Mate, from last year. Gyms, sport, being able to go outside. I think like the, yeah, missing out on what was the norm and taking things mm-hmm. for granted was the big mm-hmm. thing at the start of the year. Um, I remember when everything started up and I was massive into trying to watch a bit more live sport, trying to go out and about, enjoy the countryside because, you know, walk the canals about, you know, every day for, for months. Yeah, and I, I, I love the canals. 
but Sorry. I don't want to do it every day. I know. And, you know, actually, appreciation of, of, of being able to go outside, go on the nice walks. And we're not a million miles away from like Mulvans, from, you know, Shropshire, and uh, actually go and enjoy them. And I think like the appreciation of stuff that normally we would take for granted was massive at the start of the year. So actually training, like you said, from a physical perspective and from a mental health perspective, the amount of people that really struggled with uh with training also struggled to get back into it uh we did a lot of podcasts on talking about like introduction back to training after a layoff um but it is really tough like when you go back in and you know you're used to being at a certain kind of level um and then you realize that you have took a bit of a drop it, it is tough as well mentally it's tough mentally not being able to do your training sessions so i think for people's met like they, they realized how much of a positive effect the gym has on because we all at times don't want to train you know over you, you really want to enjoy your training sessions but there's going to be times where you don't really want to get to the gym you'd rather stay in and home but you know we know now that on a on a bigger uh, look at zooming out and looking at the gym as a whole like it's a really positive thing mentally and physically exactly in the long run I mean, yeah definitely um so yeah the uh lockdown made us get new kit we got some heaters um we were very lucky that we obviously got the support of a, a lot of the members that were in a, a fortunate position to be able to carry on paying some kind of membership um uh, which meant that we could invest into the gym uh, and they had a place to basically come back and we tried to do it even better than before because yeah. obviously um yeah from our side like the appreciation is massive um like it kept us going and we were able to to return um so i think that was like almost like um I think like when it was when it was the very first time we even said it like we had a chance to kind of change stuff like the barbell and possibly like I think reevaluate re kind of like the future steps at yeah. MSC. So on the flip, it was actually like beneficial if you want to call it that way. I yeah, I reckon <clears throat> um, COVID probably made MSC a way more sustainable mm -hmm. business like mm. with the barber club we launched the metcons changing slightly to make them a bit more periodized working towards stuff which we'll talk about in a in a short while but uh yeah it definitely uh gave us a chance to to revigor stuff because you just don't get that amount of time um and you could either waste that time and get nothing achieved or you could you know spend some yeah. good time and get it exactly where you want it to similarly, be similarly we started our podcast in uh, in lockdown uh, so yeah it's yeah there were some real positives at the start um but yeah and it was obviously great to get back up and like we said the appreciation of, of being able to play sports be able to go to the gym i think was massive and people now have uh, not took it for granted have been able to to make some good changes uh which we think will continue in uh 2022 Surely. yeah so into the summer uh what did you notice that was a uh... uh i think big highlight of the summer then was um like overall like a really good pump on the metcons yeah. uh which we kind of summarized in the metcon games um yeah. that was volume two so um kind of um we did one before so this was like an upgrade we did a special edition with the strongman style yeah. which i think um attracted more people getting into it yeah which i think was fantastic and this social or event i think was uh, 12 hours 10 it was so it was so good and it i think great fun. i think people needed it because they'd spent all that time not been able to to do things and then obviously the metcon games was this big social thing you know an a and a b group made a bit of a rival with it it was it was only for fun but it was uh it gave people a chance to just you know who felt that they wanted to be competitive exactly competitive. and i think it brought people together in a nice way like barbell club kind of i was gonna met, say yeah. i love that you know you had your you had your metcon people you had your barber that also got involved you had people that just do open gym that wouldn't normally train together all had a chance to train together get to know each other and have a bit of fun with it i think that was great um so yeah the metcon games was was excellent and i think that's like a big thing was after being locked down and in the summer competition started to open back up um it was it was great to see and um you know people then started to get back into the competitions and i think you know we've missed the competitions we've missed yeah. being able to do that and all of a sudden in the summer everything started to get back to, to normality and we had a lot of people doing competitions so you had the metcon games um obviously they returned to like rugby so for mark got back playing rugby mm -hmm. um, a lot of powerlifters competing the weightlifting was a little bit slower wasn't it it, it didn't I seem to really kind of kept going Online, online for yeah. some reason i don't know why because how, how you obviously attended a couple of powerlifting competitions like how how would that be different like why would you have they have powerlifting been running online 
as well. No. No, not at all. No. So I, I kind of assumed that, like, as they started, like, British weightlifting doing these things over the lockdown already. Yeah. Uh, it was probably easier. I don't I don't mm. really know, like, how, yeah. what was the difference. But, but it yeah. seems super slow, because, I mean, Jazz was talking the other day that they had a British, but it wasn't the official British. It was almost like an under, I can't remember how I explained it, but, like, the full British is in January yeah. or February. I think it was because, obviously, when you qualified the year before, they kind of didn't want to push it that far, I think. Um but yeah, now for, um, hopefully the things are back again. And as yeah. you mentioned, Jazz, he's actually doing comp uh, anytime soon. I think mid December. Uh, no, Sunday. Oh Sunday. yeah, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three uh, days, four yeah, days. Yeah, it's already yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think um, yeah, definitely like yeah, good to see weightlifting get back up. And I think it's in perfect time with next year, which we'll talk about with the Commonwealth Games. But uh, the online competing did put many people off. Like I'm not gonna lie. I don't know. Like I was it. keen before. <laughs> before my injury sorry to compete but when the calendar like got launched and everything was zoom yeah no, no that's, that's not, not why you wanted to compete to lift to film your lift and then send the video like no do you see yourself competing in 2022 potentially yeah no things are going really good so again like if we just want to quickly reflect on the year it's been a great lesson for myself individually um to be honest in terms of training um so potentially, yeah, um, I do want to compete, but I maybe shouldn't just say it in what? <laughs> oh, yeah. CrossFit. Oh, <laughs> stop it. That was supposed to be surprised. It's it's absolutely fine. But yeah, yeah, hopefully um, April. Yes. Makes sense. Makes mm -hmm. sense. What, what's the competition, do you know? Uh, probably uh, National Fitness Games. Mm, nothing rings a bell. <laughs> Is that what I um, uh, think you did the other day? No, no, no. no is, it not, is it under CrossFit? Yeah. Oh, wicked. Well, yeah. congratulations. Good Thank luck. You. <laughs> and I hope your training goes well. Um, in the summer as well, that was myself. I had a, a competition at the uh, at um, super training competition, which went pretty well. The aim was to, to kind of coast through it. Went up to about 90, 92% and went pretty well. Um, and then I guess for myself, it was training towards the world and the, the, the experience of going to worlds, which was fantastic. Uh, this was in September. Uh, obviously, Worlds did not go as well as I had planned. Um, but it was the world. It's fantastic to have an experience, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in hindsight, looking back, like, yeah. I was super training after, I felt pretty good. Um, and then after that, just had zero momentum, little niggles here and there. Obviously, I got COVID as well. Uh, so the Worlds did obviously not go as well as I wanted it to go. Um, so a couple of lessons learned, but a lot of it out of the control with, you know, like I said, COVID a few weeks out, a couple of little niggles, et cetera. But actually the experience of going to Worlds was sick. Um, you know, I think this is really nice as you now say, like the, your training experience and, you know, um, experiencing things like this, like going to Worlds, such a big comp and actually not going to maybe as you wished. But I think you really did take a good spin on it afterwards. Yeah. That like you actually, you got a bit more motivated yeah um which well, I, I think is great energy yeah because it was i mean after the directly after the because i knew it was going to be not as good as i wanted to but it was it was bad yeah. it was a, it was way like i've told 602 which is the lowest i've ever totaled in british powerlifting so it was a really bad competition um so it was straight after i was devastated i was like actually crying i went to elise and i was really upset um but then like after, you know a couple of people spoke to us and saying how actually like get into worlds is, is a massive achievement in itself mm -hmm. and it doesn't always go as you want it to and then it was either going to go one way or another where I was either going to be like I'm probably done now trying to get to the top level I'm happy kind of just training normal or I really want to give it a push and I want to get back to where I want to be and I definitely want to get back to yeah to push in to win the British again trying to push to get onto international teams might not happen uh it might do but I'm, I'm definitely motivated to train and I'm ever since that I'm really enjoying my training and all I needed to do was just ease it back slightly I think it was just trying to push because it was worlds trying to push as hard as i could but it just wasn't there um, so, you know let's say um like olympic lifting like uh, british weightlifting girls did tokyo lately um yeah. and they didn't do that well like um i yeah, think emily a, did but most of them didn't emily and sarah did pretty good as yeah them. but students. like you know and it just happens and it's a big Amazing. event like it's, it happens every four years right but you see it didn't yeah. just happen that's it. It's um, all a it's all a game of momentum. It's not just about like one day can you put it off. It's the accumulation of the months before it. And unfortunately for myself, it just wasn't a good couple of months prior to it. And uh, yeah. that was the result you get. But uh, definitely motivated to come back to it. And like you said, evaluate a few things, which is what I think. Like after coming back from Copenhagen, you know, trying to get control what I can control. Exactly. Um, compared to like 
you know, the stuff that you can't mm-hmm. control, getting COVID, et cetera, yeah. but you can control your nutrition, make mm-hmm. sure this is. So ever since it's been, uh, been really motivated and I'm looking forward to, to 2022. So same. That um, was a yeah big thing for myself. Um, last one then, I guess, like with the Barber Club. Yeah. Um, happy for the year's gone. I think this year, considering the, the elements of closing, open and reopening and stuff, uh, again, another successful year for Barber Club, I would say probably like obviously we've changed it a little bit. Um, this, not even this, not really the structure, but just somehow how we run it, like we edit up the check ins, um, the personal code touch. So I think this has been a massive success and I've been enjoying it a lot. Yeah. Um, it kind of created a good relationship between us and the members, like a little closer. Um, and I think like they do feel really good about it. Like, you know, like someone's in charge of your training. And I think like people who, who turn up and do most of the sessions, like being really consistent, do see the value in it. And I think the reflection in training, um, has shown up as well. Yeah. Uh, like massive improvements for people um, who's been doing the barbell since we reopened. Yeah. I agree with all of that. I don't really have much else to add on to. I think, yeah. uh, I think the barbecue has been, been really good Just success. Just very enjoyable think, year, uh, like very enjoyable block. But this is it, because everyone wants to get better as well. But fundamentally, you get to the gym because it should be something that benefits you positively, exactly. um, physically and mentally. So you should be really enjoying your training. And I think, you know, people really enjoy the sessions. I think they enjoy the groups. I think they enjoy, like I said, having a coach to talk to. And I think all of that makes it easy to sustain and easier to keep your training going. So, yeah, I think Barbell's been, uh, been fantastic. Great success. Like, I'm buzzing for next year. Yeah. This is going to be a good um, end of the year, the deadlift lift off. Yeah. Um, which, obviously, like, the lift is probably out of those three big lifts, um, like, the less... I don't want to like no no absolutely especially the trap bar yeah yeah, absolutely like compared to squat everyone can join everyone can get involved in the trap bar and I think it's going to work well with the 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 rising ladder which is the you know you get five attempts 10 kilo jumps perfect um, and a fancy dress and a fancy dress you want to go for 200 I would love to yeah you can I I don't know I don't know I, I think I can I think I can Let's see. Yeah, okay. Let's see what's happening on the day. Rumor has it there's uh, three or four people that want 300 plus. Oh, that's big. So, I like it. Uh, I'm one of them with my uh, oh. Christmas, Christmas mitts on or whatever it is. Uh, that yeah, should be a so great good. finish to yeah, the year. Yeah. Like, really excited. I think yeah. it's going to be, yeah, another good uh, another good bit of fun. Mm. So, aside from MSC, what do you think have been like the. Uh, the main trends like there's always the pendulum that we talk about shifting from one side to another like a couple of years ago everyone was doing singles at arp now everyone's doing the high rep work uh or, or more top sets i should say rather than singles what do you think of being the the trends in strength and conditioning um from 2021 the which will be or what no was, no no what the was. trends that came out of 2021 that maybe weren't quite as big of a thing yeah. in 2020 um so um as we kind of discussed like basically basing on coming back from lockdown and not being able to train as we used to train um not being able to compete as it was open and free before i think everyone kind of took like ease back uh sensation on the year um possibly like possibly working on um on the the weaknesses um call it whatever you like like maybe start like looking at your training from a different perspective um i think a lot of like injury prevention pre- prevention like kind of like shifting your training rather than peeking into the general prep stuff mm-hmm. um that's how i th- kind of felt like it, it kind of twisted like people realize how actually important those little things are um like all the all the work they normally neglect yeah. um which i think again covid and the home workouts were a bit open mind into it I think you had a lot of people doing home workouts that would try and do like a couple of these exercises that there seemed a lot like weaker and less trained people are able yeah. to do and they weren't able to do so. And it was maybe a bit of an indication that sometimes you need to step back on and mm-hmm. have a bit more movement variability in there that's going yeah. to help you ultimately sustain your training a little bit longer. And I think like also um, usually people in a gym are often like mm-hmm. bilaterally competent and um, I think <clears> possibly they realized like unilateral stuff yeah. is also important. Yeah. Um, so slight shift in this and uh mm. mate you're absolutely right i think because we did so many podcasts and, and, and so much research that yeah. was coming out around the time of like reintroducing training how much training you need to do to, to maintain volume. your gains and it was such a small amount of volume and then it was about avoiding these spikes in intensity and volume and we were trying to avoid people going from doing i don't know squatting a 
bag of rice to to squat in then one that matches yeah, exactly kind of like that. we spoke like about the yeah exactly a transitional block to begin with to gradually build back up so i think you know people are definitely focusing more on like the the easy work to begin with and like you said a bigger a bigger a bigger amount of, of, of movement variation from like an injury perspective and also just like to notice that there are other things that you can work on that the might not have like a you know like for a someone that wants to they said be bilaterally strong they want to be good mm -hmm. at squat and deadlift doing single leg deadlift probably mm -hmm. isn't going to help the deadlift mm -hmm. but what mm -hmm. it might help is you stay injury free it might help yeah. you move a little bit better uh, which can help you like i said stay injury free train a little bit longer without getting any setbacks and that's going to help you improve your deadlift so i definitely think there was a bigger focus on like these smaller muscle groups and, and working on that the little things that make the bigger difference i think sure. also like not just personally but i think people realize the um uh, like how important is the volume management like i've noticed even on people here that like they started to take that extra day off i don't know if it was because like they started them pushing a bit more when you know the numbers got back to the normal uh but like before i know people used to train maybe a bit more often because mm -hmm. they were maybe at the initial stages but let's say like like Mel now, like she established her Wednesday to be a day off and I actually really like it because now I know she feels much better for it. Um, yeah. Setting up the barbell as a, almost like Four a priority, session, yeah. but still want to do a lot of Metcons. But now I think like you need to find that middle spot, like the spot which suits you. And me personally, like 100%, like in lockdown, you know that I was doing a little bit of everything. And um, yeah, like, you know, let's say sprinting with Mark, it was really, really good lesson, enjoyable, but basically I realized I don't actually need to sprint. Um, I kind of did it because last year in Masters, that was a thing we were covering quite a lot. So it was a great practice, but I don't really do it now because that was just an extra stimulus I didn't need. Well, um, I mean, obviously, I know you already do CrossFit, but if you start focusing on, you know, yeah. being the best sprinter, being yeah, having yeah, this really yeah. good engine, you need, to, and then really good at weightlifting. It's it's so much stuff. Like I think you need to be competent. At exactly. Sprinting. Like to be fair, it was it was the chat I had with you um, when you said that, like you know, you want to run this fast, you want to lift this heavy, and you want to do everything well. And I kind of pick, and I kind of find that middle middle. What did I say? The uh, master of non yeah whatever yeah absolutely so yeah that, that, that's definitely a thing and i think like you said about um like managing your volume i think that was massive um and like you said volume allocation which is what we're talking about and like having these sessions where they, they need to be the priority and then there'll be times where because of the structure that you've got people started to to acknowledge and realize that they might feel slightly weaker on a certain session or mm -hmm. this mech on you might not be as fast as on a monday because you've done something heavy the day before you did a mech on the day before and you're starting to notice that it's not just the individual sessions that start to line up but it's the picture. yeah it's the trends over time so your weaker session might always be your weaker session yeah. compared to monday but as long as it's slightly you know getting better or it's allowing the better session to continue to get better then i think everything's fine to be fair when you just mentioned this i'm just gonna say like obviously we're running the testing this week the performance testing in metcon and some people um did maybe a little worse than did they, they did on summer. But on the flip of that, like, I think they need to remember how much they've improved in lifting, like barbell. And like, you always need to think of that where, where there is a give, there is a take. So like, it's not all, almost like a linear, like you can't be just improve it. And you know, you two Kato can't just go all the way up. If you edit, I don't know, 40 kilo on your squat. So just like a bit of understanding that as you said like you're not always gonna just be performing good at everything so basically what we do with the barbell club and the metcon is that you're you're not really prioritizing one or the other you're doing them mm. both side by side and mm. if you wanted to say i want to be i really want to improve my squat then you wouldn't do two or three metcons exactly. a week and if you exactly. say i want to improve my 2k well you wouldn't be squatting heavy twice a week exactly. you would be really prioritizing the metcons you do a little bit of strength training to to complement that but you wouldn't be trying to push them both simultaneously hard uh, and again, it's just about pushing that across to people. And if you know, again, you're not, you can't be the master of everything. You need to choose one that's a priority. Or if you're not going to choose them, you need to accept exactly. that you're not going to see like a ridiculous progress in both, as if you're training one by itself. Uh, I think that was massive to to see to people. Mm -hmm. On the talking of um, easy training, at least to begin with, I also think that lower RPE and lower fatigue training was massive in 2021. 
Uh, because I think prior to that, everyone, you know, a year or two ago, everyone was doing like heavy singles at like 80-ish, 90-ish RP pretty much every single week. And lots of people were doing this higher RP training. Um, and then a lot of research started to come out looking at like what, how much of a stimulus you need to gain strength mm -hmm. and how much you need to gain muscle. And a lot of this came around around the time of like lockdown, maybe just slightly before lockdown. And we know now that like as low as like a four to five RP, but a true four to five RP um, is enough to make strength gains. And it's enough to get a hypertrophy stimulus. So instead of people working all the time to near max, people start to train in at low RPE. And I think that is great. And I think it allows people to uh, accumulate a good amount of work. Um, so basically does this kind of pushes the stigma of, oh, you got to just work at sub-maximal load. Say again, sorry. You know, like people who wanted to always, like who, who want to get strong would come to you with saying like, oh, I should probably work at maximal or sub-maximal load. Mm. If you're talking about lower RP, so are we talking even less than sub-maximal? Well, what do you class as sub-maximal, though? Well, because I, I, I relate to the video you sent me with the RP, about yeah. four RP and sub-5. So probably that. I would say oh, sub five RP, you're really in danger of missing the stimulus. Okay. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I think if you're aiming at a five and it's a little bit too light, you've missed the stimulus. Because okay. I think five RP is probably the cutoff point. I don't want to say that in black and white. Yeah, sure. Um, but I, I think five mm -hmm. RP is probably the the, cut. the the danger is is when you are not accurate with your RP. We know from the research that the higher the RP, the more accurate it is. Um, if you're aiming at a five and you miss it by two RP, you could be doing three RP. Mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. seven reps mm -hmm. in reserve rather than five reps yeah. in reserve and all of a sudden you're not getting an, a good enough stimulus a great example of that is uh we did some kind of rpe testing in the barbar club and it was meant to be a set of uh, four at seven rpe which means in theory they should be able to do seven reps and then we did the same way and we did it for an amrap to, to nine ish rpe to see how accurate they're actually getting the reps and, and, and fisher and bless him he got 14 reps which meant that his top set when he did it for four reps was actually at zero RPE. So if you're, doing a, if you're doing your top set at zero RP, that is just not enough of a stimulus. It's not heavy enough to get the strength adaptation, the hypertrophy adaptation that you want. And now he knows that and he needs to push it forward. So the danger with the low RPE is if you miss the stimulus, you so if you miss the number, you've undershot it, you've, you've, you've missed the stimulus probably. I do think the low RPE is great, but I think there's a time and a place for both. And I think like low RP top sets and then, more volume after it when you do in a volume when you're trying to accumulate volume volume accumulation phase working at a low rp means you can accumulate more work rather than doing one set to you know in the thing we did and i'm up to nine and then the set after barney really struggled to get five reps on the weight that he got seven with the set before so if he did his first set today it's going to really limit the yeah. amount of volume he can accumulate so i think there's a time and a place for low RP training and it's probably further away from your kind of testing. As you're getting closer towards your testing, we know that like it needs to get more specific. So you need to get a bit, bit more practice in at the higher weights. That's going to be different for everyone. That's where the individuality comes in. But you need to be pushing the RPs a little bit higher to get that specific pr uh, practice and that specific skill of pushing weights hard. So I think low RP and low fatigue training was massive. Um, and I actually think in 2022, it's going to going to shift into there but we've got one more one to talk mm -hmm. about which i wanted to talk about uh velocity training yeah um obviously i've got a velocity tracker which i'm very lucky to have uh not many people have got it but i do think that uh coming into next year a lot of people are going to be using velocity trackers. i think it's a massive game changer in your training yeah. like, i think it's, you uh, just get completely different data out of it yeah i don't think it's going to be for everyone because I think you can really overanalyze it. And I can think mm. of people off the top of my head, Curran, who uh, would really overanalyze it and take things too far. But in terms of getting good feedback, I think it's going to be massive. Um, so if I think- you, If you would give a couple of tips or how, like a slight reflection on how you used it in like previous preparation, how, do you yeah. think it really helped you? I, it helps me make better decisions. It mm. helps me avoid making bad decisions. Um, so I use it for, um like i'll have daily decision or daily daily hmm? daily every day i uh, make a decision with it so if i'm doing a squat i've got a like a i know it like 200 kilos i can squat it at let's say 0.32 meters a second if i do my last warm up 200 and it moves at 0 0.35 so it's a little bit faster i'm like okay i'm lifting good today i'm better than my average i can probably push my top set a little bit harder to hit the rpe on the flip, if I'm coming in fatigued, which is what I used to be really bad for, I would try and really push the stimulus when it mm. isn't there. So like I might be warming up and 
200 kilos moves at 0.28. So it's 10% slower than normal. Uh, and in that case, it'd be like, right, I'm not lifting well today. I need to ease it back. I need to make a better decision and reduce my top set. So I have like certain weights that I know what velocity I averagely lift mm-hmm. on. And then I can make decisions based off that. That's great. One more question. Sorry. It's I haven't finished really... my first one. Can you let me oh, finish yeah. my, uh, God. Yeah. And then the second one is you can create a velocity profile over time Mm -hmm. and then you can link that to your rpe so if i do like a a single at eight rpe and i think it's a legit eight rpe i could i write it down at what is my eight rpe velocity Mm -hmm. and then it just makes my rps more accurate so if i'm like okay eight rpe my squat will be 0.2 meters Mm -hmm. a second i don't know the numbers Mm -hmm. up the head um i know that then if i hit uh, my single and so 0.21 it's probably an eight if it's like a uh, 0.15 and I say, yeah, it's an eight RPE, I'm lying to myself. So it helps improve your accuracy of RPE. It can help improve your, your top set accuracy as well. So please ask the next question, Sonia. Um, sorry, I thought you finished. Um, That's all quite all right. Um, so when you said that you, you know, based on the velocity tracker that it moves slow, how accurate is it is it to your sensation or like your own feeling like did you find it quite like when you feel like okay it's moving slow well this is the thing this is when i talk about like it's not for everyone because there'll be times where i'll do a squat and it might not be as fast i'm like i know i did wrong there Mm -hmm. I misgrooved this slightly. Mm-hmm. I know I can do it faster, but you get the idea from all because you're not just tracking that one number. You can track all of your warm up mm-hmm. sets, and if they're all, mm. you know, all underneath by five ten percent, that's okay. But if it's just the last one, you might be like, okay, this fell off technically, or I did this slightly far. I felt my weight shift forward. You can override it with your own decision, but it's you know, it's not just the one set. So you've really got to prove it, and you've really got to try and because again, I've got the velocity of all of the weights, and I just compare it to the last couple of weeks. Um, so you do get an understanding of, of how well you're lifting on that day comparatively to other days. Okay, but like if, if obviously for someone who doesn't have it, and as you said, like not everyone would probably have a chance to get it. So would you say that when I let's say squat, and I would tell you that like it's not really moving well, or I'm not really feeling it? Do you think like is it actually accurate or am I just being maybe like overthinking it? Because like if you look, if you sometimes, let's say, would say you're not feeling it moves quick, it moves yeah. quick. And then you check the velocity tracker. Has it happened that you actually were like, oh, hang on, it actually did? Well, there is that. There was, yeah, it's happened occasionally where like I'm like, oh, I feel, actually, I feel terrible mm-hmm. and the velocities are good. And oh, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. yeah, you can avoid it. Sometimes if I'm feeling bad, but the velocities are good, then I will I will try and persevere. But like, you, you, you know yourself, I can override yeah. that because I'm a, yeah. You know, I, I I think I'm pretty good at choosing yes. the numbers, um, <laughs> so I can override that. But that's but that's the danger is where like it's I don't actually think it's a game changer, Sonia. I no? think no, I don't think it's a game okay. changer. And if anyone says to me, should I get one for five hundred pounds? I tell them probably not. Oh, okay. uh, I think it tops up your training, and I think it can improve the accuracy for sure. Um, but it's not like oh my god, I was an idiot. Now I've bought a velocity tracker, and I'm a genius. Um, I think this is very valuable feedback. I think it's like, uh, it's going to give you an extra 5% if that. Mm -hmm. Um, It's going to help you avoid making really bad decisions. But like I said, you can override it if you want to. So it's just going to help you with those decisions if you want to allow it to make the decisions. Mm -hmm. But it's not all of a sudden going to add 50% to your squat and deadlift. It's just going to help you make better decisions. And if you move into 2022, the reason I think it's going to be more accessible is you can see now, like, there's a few more companies that are making the Velocity Tracker. I think the one I got, which is the Rep One, is the most popular one at the minute. Um, it's a lot of money to import it from America. There are a lot of money. There's a massive, I mean, I waited like a year for mine. Yeah. Or, or six, seven months, maybe. Uh, waited a long time, but now there's a few more on the market. And I think as soon as they become a little bit cheaper, as soon as they've gone from five hundred pounds mm-hmm. to two hundred pounds, mm-hmm. you might consider getting one for two hundred pounds. Sure, probably gyms will will maybe start um, getting hey, these. Alico, when you think what can Alico do next to make it, they've, they've made a barbell with a velocity tracker in it. And when we was at the uh, at Worlds in the Alico Head Center, like watching the um, they got like a TV in front of it, so you're doing your squat with the barbell, and then it shows you the velocity, and it is it's, it's just sick. Would that be a game changer? That. Well, no, but the same. It'd be, it'd be a game changer for the gym because if you could say yeah. to people, "We've got four elite car bars. I've got the velocity tracker in," and you get all this fucking feedback from it, it's yeah. incredible. It's really good for team sports, I imagine. If you've got uh-huh. a team of rugby mm. goons that want to bloody push it hard all the time, say, "Guys, you're working up to this," or you can put in like a fatigue stop, so you can say, "Stop when your velocity." Sorry, velocity stop. You can say, "Right, you're going to stop when your velocity drops by twenty percent." Mm-hmm. So if you start mm-hmm. at point three, as soon as it gets to 0.24 it will beep or whatever and then you can stop the set 
So like you can do a lot of things with team sports just to help people regulate their numbers better so they're not making bad decisions. Again, it's not a game changer, but uh, it will help people. And I think team sports will really benefit from it because for myself, there's, there isn't actually that much variation in, in how I lift. It might be 5%, but if you played a really tough rugby game and you feel disgustingly bad and you've got an old school percentage-based programme, or on the flip, you might be, if you're a bit work shy, you might say, actually, I can't lift anything today. Mm-hmm. It might sort of allow you to be like, actually, look, you can still lift something, mm-hmm. but you just got to reduce your training loads by 10%. And I think it'll help people make better, better training decisions over four. So I think they're going to be a lot more accessible. I think a lot more gyms are going to get them. Maybe not the Elite Car Barber, because imagine that's going to be a but lot of money. Yeah. But there'll be more velocity trackers. You'll probably get more accurate mobile apps, because there was a mobile app before they did it. Mm-hmm. And I think there'll be something like that that will come along, and um, they'll definitely get more. Uh, more people using it. You can see more powerlifters using it already now. So it's definitely going to. It's 2022. Other trends that we're going to see. What do you reckon? Um, we'll come back in 2020. Yeah, at the end of 2022, we'll see how accurate we were. I think, um, you know, like how free weights um, being kind of like a big hype. I think it was, there was a year when free weights became just like, yes, let's, let's, let's not use machines because three ways like crossfit olympic lifting everything came along yeah. um but i think like coming back to like a safe use of of machines will be a big one um and i think like from from a perspective of of me or my clients or what i've seen i think machines are just being highlighted as as a definitely a good start even if you have a gem pop starting to train, that's the best thing you can probably put them on. So I think this just got a bit more appraisal lately. Um, I think a couple of SNC coaches started to push in that stigma of machines being dog shit away because it's just not true. And I, I'm a big fan of machines myself. Right, 100%. Um, I so mass, massively agree with you massively agree right. and I think uh, like it's a couple of years and it is the pendulum and, and the pendulum shifting from low RP yeah. to hard training vice versa from being you should be doing everything with a barbell to now being there's a time and a place to be using machine work I think this starts happening in 2021 where you kind of we do it in barbell club you've got your exercises for like your strength orientation your deadlift your squats and then you've got exercises that, that are better predispos- predisposed to hypertrophy work your belt squat is going to be better for, for rep work than a, a low bar back squat. Oh, absolutely. Um, your fucking, your, I don't know, your uh, chest press or dumbbell press is going to be better than a competition style bench press. For you, if you're trying to improve your back, uh, your back strength, maybe doing a chest supported machine roll is going to be better than doing bent over rolls after you've already hammered your lower back for two hours. So I think now there's definitely a time and a place. And I think that um, it is just the pendulum shifting back. The danger is people taking it too far to then think, I shouldn't do anything for barbell. Mm-hmm. As every, as always, everything's everything, probably yes. the happy me- happy happy medium is machine work where it's where it's justified and where it's needed. And then your machines for your hypertrophy. Do you think there's a, um, with the machine stuff, do you think a lot of it's mm-hmm. like, we talk about like injury prevention and weightlifting, you think that's going because of, you know, actual improving the muscle size. I think because a lot of people had, lockdowns came back wanted to compete and do something mm-hmm. maybe uh, a bigger a bigger period of time working on muscle hypertrophy i've already had a few powerlifters who've just competed say that they want to gain some good size now in the exactly. next few months i think um i think we as a gym were really pushing the the thing that during that time when you don't have access to your normal equipment let's work on those bits you normally probably neglect a little bit and i think it did like got a bit more appreciation of doing like the isolation stuff um static work and i think like people actually realized the change like let's say uh in first lockdown i only had a dumbbell at home when we didn't use the gym and uh, i did so much unilateral stuff and i like it it boosted my training massively like i know this is very subjective boost boost, boost. but i can't stress it more yeah, yeah. than like it was it was really really good so actually you know you lose one thing but you've gained another and then i think if you then came back to the gym and not even just related to lockdown um or covid but like like i'm gonna say as an example just like i know he he's been dealing with an injury and he also always been just like gifted with the fact that he didn't really have to do any other stuff but then i know his hip starting to play well yeah he's been super specific for, for 15 exactly years or exactly like yeah and then you know 
the the little thing with the little niggle with the hip and then suddenly like his his um supplementing training changed like all the accessory work is based around like a deep knee flexion yeah uh really deep like hip work like a lot of rotational stuff so single leg work so that's just another example of using the machines because they're so safe as well like single leg leg press yeah. is a great well, exercise you, you you touched on it there as well is like being super hyper specific for a long period of time is a probably not good for long term something something gonna... growth. but also like from an injury perspective it's not much movement variation we know that mm-hmm. movement variability really helps prevent injuries so if you're just doing snatch clean and jerk all the time like you just use that same position over Absolutely. and over and over repetitive injuries are going to occur but all of a sudden when you add this bigger base of exercises in there so like you said like i think it's doing a hell of a lot of like fun for elevated split squats with knee ridiculously like ridiculously i've never seen any range of motion like i know it's, it's, but then um, it's just like as, as much as me and you know that our training is not just based around yeah. snatch clean you only you're, see you only see like yeah. you do it well you're pretty good you, you share a million videos after every training session but like uh, most people, they, they only put up, oh, here's my snatch, my clean and jerk. So you don't see the other stuff that goes underneath. But it there's the top a level plenty, issues. absolutely. Well, yeah, absolutely. You should be doing like extra. Because there was a time, I think, when you maybe first started at MSC and you were like, my knee hurts. It was like, you need to do a hamstring work. You need to do this. And, and- 100%. And it was, I think, yourself um, who kind of helped me with the plan for a bit. Yeah. Um, game changer that was uh, wow. adding chin up. Like, the, like the velocity <laughs> now honestly like there's a lot you need to do around it because of course if you want to get better at those big lifts uh you gotta do them it's like it's like with everything if you want to be good at running you gotta run but those things are mm, irreplaceable that's not really the word i, I wanted to use okay. but um, yeah there's there's a time and a place in that when you're doing your, when you're periodizing your training. So like further out from competition, you could probably use a bigger base of exercises. You could probably add move, more movement variation in there that's going to help you stay injury free, hopefully gain some good muscle mass. And then when you start to get a little bit more specific, you're reducing the dosage of, of the variation. You're going a bit more specific with your exercises, but you're still doing them, but you're just not doing as many of them or to the yes. same amount. So yeah. we do think that coming into next year, there's going to be a lot more use of uh, machines. There's going to be a bigger focus on hypertrophy, um, both of an injury prevention perspective and just from like um uh, movement variation perspective so we think it's going to be massive for weightlifters powerlifters general populations you can see people already um like talking about like using machine work for gem pop and actually if you're spending so long trying to learn someone to squat that's never touched the bar and they actually miss out on some hard training for a few weeks it's and a few I weeks think- you could have done them actually hard leg pressing or, or bell yeah. squat and I think if st- if things gonna stay luckily or hopefully open and we're gonna be able to just carry on as we did, next year should be a good push yeah. because obviously people had a good run 2021, at least the big half of it. So ready to compete. So um, I th- yeah, I think 2022 actually what you might see is even further removed. I think people might actually probably not the best thing from a business perspective, yeah. maybe train less in the gym and more actually outside doing other sports which i'm all for um i think you need to obviously do your strength training and stuff but with the commonwealth games coming up you're going to see loads of weightlifting you also you've got new facilities popping up all over the place you went swimming the other day yeah it's not a bad thing for msc for you to enjoy swimming yeah. as well yeah yeah um so i think actually there's going to be people that are going to do other activities outside of the gym like you see now like everyone's mad for like bouldering um everyone's mad for basketball like, <laughs> and it's, it's great it's 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 great from like a, a mental perspective to it's have another great. little absolutely bit of fun. so i think like with all the facilities coming up and then the commonwealth's game there's going to be you know a bit of extra light limelight rightfully so on other sports um which obviously the gym would complement but um i think you'll see other people doing more like kind athletics. of activities yeah, yeah, yeah. athletics mm-hmm. stuff outside the gym there's going to be a massive focus on birmingham in 2022 with the commonwealth games you're going to see more people doing weightlifting because of it you got Jazz representing MSC 100%. and Birmingham, um, which is massive. He's the poster boy. Rightfully so. He's a good-looking guy. Um, <laughs> but you're going to see more people, I think, playing other sports and actually getting out there, enjoying sport, yeah. which is fantastic. Should be exciting year, Commonwealth Games. Yeah. So we've got, we reckon, more comps as well? Weightlifting, powerlifting? I think big time. 100%. You've yeah, got, overall. like I said, Jazz is competing next week. He's then got the British in, I think, general Feb. You've got the CrossFit Games. 
Uh, then you've got the Commonwealths in the summer, which is going to be excellent. More people are going to maybe get in, interested in, in competing and pursuing something, even if it's not a Commonwealth level, maybe doing like a, a local level something. Yeah. Uh, so I think we're going to see a lot more competitions and a lot more people playing playing sport. Should be, should be good. The final one, harder training. Like I said, we had a big focus on your low RP, and I think people are going to start to train at slightly higher Bring RPs. it up. Bring it up, bring it up. Time and a place for everything, but I think we're going to see more harder training, higher RP work, especially with the inclusion of more machine work because it's going to be safer for people to push it. It's going to yeah. help people get the stimulus and not miss out on it. Uh, so I think we're going to see a lot of people working at higher RPs. Especially if you've been rebuilding for six months. Like me, like, like you. Me. We're ready to go. We are so ready to go. Is the year. So you're going to see me in a basketball game. You're going to see you in a CrossFit comp. <laughs> we're both going to win the British next year. It's going to be a hell of a year. Um, stay tuned. We'll listen to this back in December and we'll see how accurate we are. Um, we're obviously going to be keeping the podcast up, guys. I'm away in Sweden at the European Championships for the next two weeks. Uh, so I will not be here next week. Well done. Um, but I've not done it yet, but thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to Stockholm, uh, which is minus two. So that's going to be fun. Um, and yeah, you will uh, continue and we will listen to this back. Yes. And see how accurate you are. So stay yeah. tuned, guys. Hopefully we write and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening. <laughs>